morning, everybody. It is April 25th, 2018, 617 a.m. These are our current temperatures as of this morning. We can see things warming up a little in the east part of the country. You cut it right down Memo the Elf here. Uh, we have a lot of 50s and a lot of high 40s going on uh, this morning just as the sun comes up. Although a lot of people in the northeast cannot see the sun because it is raining. At least where I am, just north of Philadelphia, right where this 48 is, maybe a little south uh, it feels like 49. It's a nice uh, temperature outside. The rain is making it a little bit cooler out. Should clear up by the end of the day. And then finally by uh, the end of Thursday, this thing should be rolling off Maine and finally into the Atlantic. But then we have a separate one coming right behind it. Um, I don't think it'll be as bad. It may have potential to stir up some tornado situations um, in our typical areas, such as Arkansas, Louisiana, north side of Louisiana. Uh, Mississippi, Alabama, we got Tennessee here, Kentucky, uh, possibly up into the west coast of the Carolinas as well, certainly bringing another possible coastal issue to the Carolinas. Uh, again, maybe not as strong as it was uh, this previous low pressure system that just went up the east coast and is now fading off. Uh, let's take a look at an article real quick. This is pretty interesting. I saw this on SpaghettiModels.com today. Um, in fact, I believe the article came out in January, but we just haven't really talked about it. Um, last year, okay, 2017 hurricane season, we replaced three spots on the top five costliest hurricane list. Um, we have touched on this before, Katrina being the most expensive hurricane ever as of right now uh, in 2005. But then there's Harvey from last year. The Harvey was that uh, hurricane that uh, hit Texas basically twice, and then after that, everything just went downhill. We had about 10 consecutive significant hurricanes in a row, which broke the record in 2005. Um, we also had the most overall costliest season since 2005. Previously, um, 2005 held that record. In fact, this might be a cumulative cost of 16 separate billion dollar weather events. So maybe this is more than just hurricanes, even though the topic is hurricanes. $306.2 billion as opposed to the $214.8 billion that it cost us in 2005 to repair. And sometimes, and actually in some cases, no, uh, things were not even repaired. There's still damage from Katrina from 2005 that we have not fixed yet because it in some ways it's almost pointless. Uh, Hurricane Harvey alone was $125 billion, guys. That is an insane amount of money. Um, it had an approximate cost of $161 billion. And let's see, there is the cumulative 306.2. And then we have uh, Maria, or Maria, sorry, 2017, 90 billion. Then we had Sandy in 2012, the one that came up the East Coast and uh, messed up the Jersey Shore pretty bad. That was 71 billion. And then we have Irma, which was 50 billion. Now, had this thing not hit Cuba, guys, this would be a lot higher of a costly hurricane. It would probably be in the top three, uh, if not maybe even possibly beating Harvey because of the property values um, along the west coast of Florida. Now, they talk about this too. Um, in part of this article, if I can actually stop scrolling for a minute and making you guys dizzy and find it. Uh, let's see. Okay, in terms of insured U.S. coastal properties, this is pretty interesting. Uh, vulnerable to hurricanes, New York ranks number one with $2.92 trillion in property value, followed by Florida, $2.86 trillion, and then Texas, where Harvey hit $1.17 trillion, and then we have Massachusetts in there with $849 billion, then New Jersey, which got hit with Sandy, uh, 713 billion. So a pretty interesting stat website here for you guys. Again, three of our hurricanes last year have made the top five costliest list on record. Uh, we have flood payout information. We have hurricane uh, detailed information on each hurricane. Uh, we have injured, lost, uh, 1986 to 2015, adjusted. New York is in there. Uh, just a cool article. I will link this in the description box uh, for those of you interested in looking at it further. Now, let's talk really quick about this other low pressure system that is moving across the country. Uh, currently around, I want to say, New Mexico, Texas-ish. Let's take a look at it, actually. All right, so we're actually near Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska, which are actually feeling rain as we speak, northern Texas. Now, this thing's going to roll down, and it's going to get pretty significant as it hits up in this area here. You're going to see some yellows and reds. That's what we always want to look out for, especially during tornado season. Upflow from the Gulf, west to east, shear wind. We get tornadoes in Tornado Valley or Tornado Alley. Call it whatever you want. It uh, doesn't matter to me. Uh, same exact topic. 
There's the low pressure buildup right over, I believe that is the east coast of Arkansas. Then we move into Tennessee and Kentucky, and you can see the entire state of Alabama is covered in this as well. And then we get some of those spotty yellows and stuff that we don't like to see. Um, we got a Georgia in here, so maybe Atlanta will be part of this uh, warning and watch on Friday. Uh, the 27th, just as this low pressure is lifting off Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire that we just dealt with and are currently dealing with in the northeast. Then by the end of the day, Friday, it will make its way into the Carolinas. Now between that, between now and Friday, sorry, earthquake, uh, Montecefalione, Italy, 4.3, interesting. We've also had some earthquakes moving across the middle of the country and one up in uh, southeastern Canada. Uh, I haven't seen one up there in a while. Anyway, so anyway, this is the GFS model. We are Friday the 27th. Uh, the west coast of the Carolinas. Now this thing could shift. It could be a coastal issue. And then as we move into the weekend, unfortunately, here's the late day Friday. Here's the beginning of the day Sunday. Most of New York covered most of the east coast of Pennsylvania. And then pulling behind it, we got parts of West Virginia, uh, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, and even Michigan up in this area a little bit will get struck by this rain. At least it's not snow. Uh, but unfortunately, when this thing starts whipping around uh, on Saturday, counterclockwise motion, you can see it pulls down some cold air. And you see some areas of New York and even Pennsylvania have a little bit of snow associated with it. We'll see what happens if that is actually going to happen with the current temperatures we have. We're going to have a change in the jet stream soon, too. We've had that high trough that's been making these weird warps and keeping a lot of cold air on the east coast. Well, that's going to begin to reverse. Now, the dip is going to be over the west coast, and then it's going to rise over the east coast, allowing that warm air to come in from the gulf. But what that also does is make us vulnerable to the possibility of tropical storms and hurricanes. So uh, we have a lot to talk about. In in the coming weeks and months here is a look of it on our Doppler radar that we like to use our water chart you can see that dense water just blowing out of Texas and then coming right across Louisiana and the southern areas of Arkansas leading up to current time which is right about 200 frame we see there's basically two parts to this system here one is over Kansas and Iowa uh, kind of stretches into Missouri here and then we have Texas Louisiana uh, Arkansas and currently moving into the Mississippi area as this low pressure counterclockwise is spinning up the East Coast just finishing its business um, again it is raining in southern Pennsylvania southeastern Pennsylvania so uh, that's it for now, guys. We've got to keep an eye on this low-pressure system. We'll be back to talk about more hurricanes later on this afternoon. Sorry I didn't have a video yesterday. Got caught up doing some stuff, but at least we meet here every single morning. All right, guys, take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.